So let's take a look at the first chakra of the earth. The base or the root, Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta is located at the southern end of the Cascade Range in California. This potentially active volcano stands 14,179 feet high, making it the second highest peak of the Cascade Range. But only one of many that are part of the Shasta Trinity National Forest. Mount Shasta has quite a few legends, stories, and anomalies that have followed it through time. The Klamath tribes held to believe that Mount Shasta is inhabited by the spirit of the above world, Skell, who descended from heaven to the summit at the request of their chief. Skell then fought with the spirit of the below world, Leo, who resided at Mount Mazama, by throwing hot rocks and lava. Another legend is centered on a hidden city, a crystalline city of technologically advanced society of human and mythological creatures. This city is called Talos. This is associated with the survivors of Lemuria, whom flocked to Mount Shasta after the continent sank into the Pacific Ocean. These beings reside in a series of complex tunnels beneath the mountain and has been said to occasionally been seen wearing white robes. Another gentleman named J.C. Brown, whom is a British prospector, discovered an underground city beneath Mount Shasta in 1904. Brown was employed by a mining company and came over from England to prospect for gold. He discovered a cave that sloped down for 11 miles. In the cave, he found a village filled with gold, shields, and mummies, some of which reached 10 feet tall. When a team was finally assembled some 30 years later to explore the area, J.C. Brown never showed up and he was never heard from again. A gentleman named Guy Ballard, who was hiking, said to have encountered the Count of St. Germain. He told the tale of how St. Germain got him started on the path of the I Am Religious Movement. St. Germain was a European adventurer with an interest in science, alchemy, and the arts. He was known as an aristocrat gentleman who did not die and who knew everything. He kept his birth and background very secretive, 
but it has been rumored that he was born to the Prince of Transylvania around the year 1691. Along with the legends, there are other anomalies that are affiliated with Mount Shasta. The manner in which clouds settle above the summit regularly, such as this, show us the electromagnetism and energy around the mountain. The clouds tend to magnetize towards this electromagnetic energy. Another is the energy people talk about having felt while visiting. They describe it as a vortex type energy. At these points, energy is emitting out of the earth in cone patterns, connecting the above to the below. If the energy is spiraling upward in a clockwise motion, it is considered a negative energy. If it is spiraling downward in an anti-clockwise motion, it is considered a positive energy. Also, the diameter of Mount Shasta being the same as CERN at 17 miles wide seems like an odd coincidence, except there are no coincidences. There are many truths to be discovered in all this information, so let's get into it. Electromagnetic waves are created by time-varying currents and charges. Stationary charges produce electric fields. Moving charges and currents produce magnetic fields. Maxwell's equation describes the electric and magnetic fields are generated and altered by each other. Transmission lines are used to transfer electromagnetic energy from one point to another with minimum loss over a wide band of frequencies. There are three major types of transmission lines, TEM, TE, and TM. What we are seeing here is what is below the surface is the stationary charge, the spiral energy emitting the electromagnetic fields. The flow through the mountain range creates the sine wave with the lifting of the land creating the range and showing us the effect which is the earth reacting to these forces. For those who saw Roy's clip about the field lines moving, this is the real world data showing us how the field lines move in the area. Electric field lines reveal information about the direction and the strength of an electric field within a region of the space. T is the period of a waveform. E is the electrical field strength. L is self-inductance. O is Omicron. S is displacement. So basically, the strength of the electric field is a self-inducing circuit using symptoptic growth rate, which means it is a slow growth rate to create a better algorithm. The charge is displaced across the layer using the crystalline conductors. They're stacked. This growth is showing us the period of the waveform and the wavelength. 
So how can I see this is accurate? Well, using the layout of the land and the mountains, this sine wave is showing us a slow frequency. The quakes that occur here show us the algorithm that has been built running at a steady pace of 2 to 3 on the Richter scale. So the year 1904 was when a Brit British prospector came over to assess the land. This tells us it was after our most recent reset. The Crown wanted to establish the area just like the elite always do after each reset. They know exactly where to go to obtain the glory. So J.C. Brown was sent on his mission, reported back the details, perhaps the state of the area was in after the reset, or perhaps to assure everything was still intact. However, when a team was assembled 30 years later, which gave the Crown quite a head start, J.C. Brown never showed up and then he was never heard from again. Also, the tunnel that went 11 miles down. This is where a majority of this technology resides, as we have said many times in past research. Hopefully this has given us a root understanding of how the first chakra, Mount Shasta, works and operates.